Hey, Ms. Tool. Okay, let's start. This is the uh, Future Learning Action Talks. Supporting the practice of spreading inspiring ideas, brought to you by Flat Classroom. Thanks uh, for coming into the room. I've just tweeted it out. Morning, Vicky. Great to see you here as well. Thanks, Lisa. And I'm not away. I'm actually here. There we go. It's 5 a.m. in the morning here in Beijing. And I hope it's a pleasant evening, I think, where everybody else is on the other side of the world at the moment. Vicky, if you would like to retweet my tweet, that would be great. And see if we can get uh, some more people into the room. But this is uh, part of our series of learning action talks. And uh, we do give opportunities to people in the flat classroom um, certified teacher course to present their final full global project ideas and to inspire others uh, to join, join them and just to give you know, the great ideas that they've been working on. So I know um, some people are still trying to load slides, but I do believe we have the first uh, talk set up. And this is, is in fact, um, Cindy, I think this is yours, correct? And if so, I'm going to ask you to make a start. Is it Cindy or is it Cynthia? Sorry. <laughs> it's a little early in the morning for me. <laughs> OK. Over to you. Thank you. Several members to talk to you, click the talk button once and you start talking. Over to you. Can you hear me okay? Oh good, I thought it wasn't working. Glad to hear it is. Um, my project for the SWAT classroom was a uh, project called When Missoula Was Young, Engaging Students in the Living History of Their Community. Um, and I'm going to be taking a look at the seven steps to flattening our classroom with this presentation. And I need to figure out how to change slides. Ah, there we go. Okay, students are going to be in this project, they're going to be um, divided into teams and assigned to research the identities of mystery people. Students are going to discover uh, what the following people have in common. The first woman representative elected to U.S. Congress, a Reverend Salish leader who was forcibly removed from her tribal homeland to an Indian reservation, a race car driver, mechanic, and inventor, um, and rancher who played a principal role in the development of a city airport, and a homesteader whose farm has been preserved by a city as a community treasure. So um, you'll find some background information on this uh, on the website. And let me give that to you really quickly. Uh, hopefully that will work for you. There is a, um, if you go to the project progress tab on the website, you will see a PowerPoint called Our Community PowerPoint, or PPT, and that will give you some additional information about the actual research and a little bit of history about uh, Missoula. So thinking and acting like historical researchers, students will use primary resources to reconstruct life in their community in 1883 through the eyes of children living at that time. And the way this program is going to work is the students aren't going to know what is connecting them all. And hopefully through researching, they will discover that all of these people lived, was living in Missoula during 1883. So we're going to have nine teams consisting of three third graders, one to two high school history students, and one to two high school digital film students. Uh, you'll see here a picture of the first meeting that we had. This is a picture of my computer lab uh, in Missoula. And this is a third grade teacher explaining to the high school students uh, some of the guidelines that they should be following when working with third graders. And I feel like this is a really important piece in terms of cross-peer mentoring. So when you're working with third graders through high school students, uh, there are some things that I think that need to be explained to the high school students. And what she explained to them is that they are a powerful role model to the third graders. 
um, and that they need to model positive behavior uh, and attitudes, and that these third graders are likely to, some of them may uh, have a crush on them and how they should handle that. She goes through great detail on how that would work. Um, and she explains that they really should not have any physical contact with these students or really any uh, interaction outside of school. So she's laying some of the groundwork for the high school students um, before they, they actually meet with the third grade students. And I guess, should I pause or just look for hands if anybody has any questions? I guess I'll just look for hands if anybody has questions. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rolling. Uh, I took a look at the connection planning tool that Vicki and Julie developed and tried to uh, see how it applied to my project that I was working on. Um, and really, um, this project encompassed all the information and communication pathways. And we're going to probably be using many of the generation pathways in addition to learning. Um, now, the, if you go to the location area, though, we are primarily focusing with this project on the uh, district, our school district, and our city. My hope is that I will uh, end up having a second um, flat classroom project that would be expanded to the area that I've circled there, the world, the hemisphere, continent, nation, or state. Um, and actually taking it to another level. But for purposes of this project, we're specifically working with district and city. Um, in further exploring the connection step, uh, I wanted to look at the push technologies and pull technologies that we'd be using. Uh, the push technologies were mostly face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, a lot of these are going to be field trips or people coming in to speak with the students. The pull technologies, we haven't really decided on what we're going to use because we're still in the process of this whole project. Uh, but some of the ideas were iGoogle, NetVibes, uh, Google Reader, Flipboard, uh, or Instapaper. When I looked at the contributions and collaboration that students would be doing, I used the community creation chart that Vicki and uh, Julie came up with and uh, applied it to Actually, something, we skipped a few slides in there. There were several slides that aren't in there. So I guess I'll just jump to this slide. Oh, Vicki, I'll get off if you want to talk. Uh, here's a tip, and this happens to all of you. Sometimes it, uh, it renumbers things. So it does uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then if you look at the end, it's got, I'm going to go ahead and do it for you. But if you hit the down arrow, we're going to go to 7, 8, 9. And then we'll have to go back to the beginning for 10. Uh, and then 11. Sometimes it messes up the numbers, and I do not know why. But if you hit the down arrow, how about I let you look at it and see if you can do that. The down arrow right beside where it says page 10, go down because sometimes it numbers the pages wrong. Uh, you want to look at the slide numbers. Very good. You've got it. And I hope everybody will follow those instructions as well. OK. I didn't actually do that. Somebody else did that for me. So I was on slide, let's see, six. And then I had to jump down to seven. Is that right? OK. I think I've got it. So let me backtrack a little bit here. So uh, some of the Web 2.0 tools that we're going to use include Skype, uh, uh, Weebly, Dropbox, YouTube, Wordle. Uh, we haven't decided whether we're going to use Wikispaces or Google Docs for our research. Uh, we will be using Google Earth. We'll also be using uh, iPads and flip cameras. And then specifically, I'm going to be teaching the video and the photography piece of this project. And I use Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, those are pretty expensive programs for a lot of people to use. So I've also given you the uh, equivalent Web 2.0 tool, JCut for video uh, editing and GIMP for Photoshop. Those are two um, programs that if you don't have the Adobe products, you could use um, JCut and GIMP. So I'm looking at the synchronous and asynchronous um, tools that we're going to use. 
Uh, the synchronous ones are going to be things like using their cell phones uh, and mobile devices, face-to-face -face meetings and field trips. And then the asynchronous is going to be uh, social bookmarking. They're going to be researching their um, bookmarking their research that they do um, and put it into a group. Uh, they'll be using email, Weebly, Google Docs, Wikispaces, and Dropbox. Uh, this is a picture here of the lady from the Missoula Public Library. And she she was demonstrating to students how to use microfilm because they're going to be needing to go back to uh, you know, some of the early newspapers from the 1800s and those are all on microfilm. And most of the students did not know how to use that. So moving on to citizenship, um, again this brings me back to, I actually think this is one of the more important steps in all of the steps for uh, flattening a classroom. I don't think we can talk about this enough. Um, so for instance, the guidelines for cross-peer mentoring, uh, I think that for both online and face-to-face -face is an important piece to this. I do have those guidelines, by the way, posted on the website. Actually, all the documents for this project are being posted on the website that I gave you. So if anybody were to do uh, say elementary with high school students, feel free to borrow those guidelines. I think they're probably pretty good. Oops, now I need to go back up here. Okay. So now we're back to the community creation chart. And this is uh, this is going to be a lot of work for these students because they're going to be working with a lot of community members. Uh, they're going to be working with the cemetery staff and in fact our presentations, we're going to be creating nine videos when this project's done and they will be posted on our uh, county cemetery website. Uh, they're going to the Mansfield Center to do research. That's our university uh, library essentially. Um, and I talked earlier about the library staff. St. Mary's Mission, Traveler's Rest, these are all uh, historical places near our city that they will be able to get information. So they've got a wide community of people that are going to be helping them research and work with this project. And, and also they'll probably be interviewing grandparents, teachers, and that type of thing. Whoops, now I need to go to page 11. Okay. So I took um, the learning design high planning tool that uh, Vicki and Julie used in their book and tried to apply it to this project. Um, I'm not going to talk specifically about any one of these, but you can kind of see how it works. Um, really what I, I like the idea of exploring the choice uh, and keeping differentiated instruction in Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence in mind when doing this. Um, and I think this is a good way to really visually see what you're working with. Uh, really my goal in this project would be to reach every student to engage them and to give them a choice. I really do see my role as a coach rather than a lecturer. And one of my um, favorite sayings in the book or in that particular chapter is, is a teacher should be human and not perfect. And I really like that approach. Moving on to the creation piece of this project, um, we're going to be actually creating a lot of projects in this on different levels, uh, really reaching uh, different cognitive levels. Um, we're going to create photo stories that tell the story of their subject's lives from the perspective of the person in first person narration. So in other words, our third graders are going to be narrating their person's story uh, as if they were that person during that time period. So I think that's going to be really powerful for the third graders to actually feel like they are um, that person in time and what their life was like. Uh, and those videos are going to be done in the Ken's Burn style. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but if you kind of Google Ken Burns video, you'll see kind of the style of video that he has. And we'll, I'm going to have my video students uh, kind of research that and create these videos to look like those. 
Um, and like I said earlier, we are going to link these photo stories to the city cemetery website, and we will also be linking them to the school website. We're going to be creating Google Place tours uh, and story map their subjects' lives. So they're going to research where their subject uh, went or traveled, and then create a Google Place tour to map that out. Um, hopefully, at this time, we'll do some geocaching to locate local landmarks that were important to their subject that they were working on. And finally, we will uh, have a celebration. Now part of this project, uh, and what interests me, the timing wise for this project, is that our school district uh, last year took a year long, um, hired a consulting firm, and over a year long process created a 21st century initiative. And um, that's, this is something that I'm going to be presenting, or I have presented already, and, and I'm going to continue to do work with this. But um, this project is going to be part of the Missoula County Public Schools 21st Century Initiative. Through the uh, Missoula County Public Schools commitment to transform schools, transform its schools from programs and programs to better meet the needs of the 21st century teachers and students, this project will be an early adopter example of place-based teaching and learning. To that end, we will be a venue to share the project with District K-12 uh, teachers. So I will be presenting this not, I will personally be presenting this to uh, our teachers at an innovative cadre that we have scheduled later in May. Um, this project is an inquiry-based alternative to the existing third grade unit on Missoula history. So in the past, we've done, uh, the third graders have done a Missoula history project, but we've replaced that with, hopefully, uh, if we get this all done, uh, with this project instead. It's going to be published and disseminated to the school district's third grade teachers with the idea that potentially reaching the district's 525 third graders. So hopefully in the future this will become the standard curriculum instead of what we currently have. Um, the essence of this project is student-led historical research focusing on the stories of a group of people joined by a common bond and that they were children during a particular time in history. The process described in this project can be replicated across place and time and implemented across grade levels. So um, my goal is to take this to another, to another level in the long run. Um, there are going to be self-reflections uh, involved with this, and not just at the end, but ongoing. And then we will uh, probably have some type of an award show at the end of the uh, project, which we think should be in May. Um, here's just an example of uh, trying to carry this to another level of uh, project two. Um, maybe work with uh, a fellow teacher has a contact in Shanghai. Maybe do some kind of a comparison of what life was like in pick a pick a year, maybe 1883, compared to life in Missoula in 1883, and maybe do it with uh, multi grade levels. So that's just kind of an idea of where to take it from there. Um, and here's just kind of an example of taking the same project that I'm working in, project one, and just rewording a little bit to include um, living history across the world instead of just across the community. And then this is my word cloud for my master global uh, project design ideas page that is on the flat classroom name. Um, we are in the first year of implementation of the new model of change, the 21st century initiative. Um, and I think this is a dynamic, this dynamic model really integrates the, C, the six key elements into teaching and learning process. Uh, and those, that, uh, those uh, key elements included increasing student engagement, transforming learning environments, support innovators, personalized professional growth, enhance communications, and collaborate to make decisions. So this project has really given me the opportunity to address many of those elements that were in our 21st century initiative um, and our new model of education. And that's it. That's just absolutely fantastic. Wow, yes. Uh, I'm just really impressed. Uh, Kathy, did you want to say something? Does anyone like, does anyone like to, well, sorry, would anyone like to ask Cindy any questions before we move, uh, move to the next person? 
at this stage. Uh, Kevin, over to you. Hey, I, re I really like this project. Uh, one quick question. How did you get the, the teachers from the completely different grade levels with the elementary school and the high school uh, organized? Well, actually what happened is a third, the third grade teacher applied for a grant and got the grant and she got several iPods and flip cameras and to be honest, I don't think she really knew how to do anything with those. Um, plus she knew she was going to need help from a, uh, high school students to actually do the research project that she was looking at. So she contacted our high school uh, history teacher and he contacted me and the three of us got together and really felt like this was a good fit. Did you want to say something? Um, I was just going to uh, echo my admiration. I know all of you are just going to do a great job, but um, this is exactly uh, what we were talking about. We have a common language, and for those of you who are visiting with us, I know we've had some visitors come in. Uh, these teachers uh, are using the pedagogical methods that we share in the, the New Flat Classroom book, and they were really, they had the book before anybody else did, but this is exactly what we're talking about. We're speaking a common language, and now after seeing what you presented, because you used that common language, I know exactly what you're doing, and I want to take this back to my school. Um, it's so wonderful. You have just done a great job and I like how you you think local and then you say okay and now here's how we can apply it uh, globally and that is just so wonderful and you're also replacing what you already have and saying okay this is a 21st century model that integrates other classrooms and you also acknowledge that flattening the classroom isn't just about connecting across the world, it's about connecting with the community and I think that you're going to find that your school gets a lot of press off of this. Just like when my school did a, the Flint River project and started really documenting the history of that river, we've got so much positive press in the community for what we did and when you flatten your, your classroom and you go outside the walls like this, you're teaching so many things. So keep us posted and uh, this is just excellent, uh, great work. Thanks again, Cindy. Great. Okay, let's keep moving here. We've got other speakers as well. So I think, do we have other slides loaded at the moment? Um, if I just go to the next slide, for example. Ah, here we go. Kathy. Over to you, Kathy. Thanks. Hi everybody, can you hear me? I'm so embarrassed to go after that one. <laughs> that presentation. <laughs> uh, it's a very busy time for schools in Pennsylvania right now with PSSAs and I'm part of a team that helps so I have to say I've been in and out of my office a lot lately so. Oh, okay, well my idea was about building relationships. Uh, it had to, it had to be about um, I wanted to start smaller um, and then kind of build globally from there. So let's take a let's take a little walk here. So let's find out. I want you to right now look outside your window and just tell me exactly what you see. If you don't see anything, um, that's okay. Just go ahead and just type it on the whiteboard real quick. What do you see? I'll just take a couple seconds on this. Tell me what do you see? Yes, and it's bright and sunny out here right now. Okay, so you're not seeing anything. You're in the office. Still dark morning time there. Okay, perfect. So right now we're all seeing different things. Um, however, we are together at this time right now, in real time together, and this is what um, we're, we're seeing. So if we're looking out the window. Um, now, the other thing that I wanted to just think about is what types of things do you see in your town? 
So if you were to just go for a quick ride around your town, what types of places um, would you see? What types of, um, would it be a shopping center? What, what would you see? Parks? Well, I don't want to say too much, but what types of things are available? All right, so Vicki sees flowers. She's seeing some flowers. Cindy's seeing the university buildings. Perfect. Cynthia's ha seeing the park, the library. Those are kinds of things that you see there in the places that you are. Perfect. So you get an idea. We may all, again, we're in different areas. However, we are seeing the same types of, of almost the same types of places. Um, but there are also historical types of places that are available that we may not necessarily always see. So who, who's seeing some historical places? Lindsay, or no, not Lindsay. Julie, the historical places. That's right, you, you are seeing those things there. So my idea, oops, what number slide was I, 19? 20, where are you? 19. <laughs> there you are. So my goal is, um, first I want to work with within the virtual community. Right now, I work for a virtual charter school in the state of Pennsylvania, in the United States. So we are almost a small uh, flat community ourselves. There are students all over Pennsylvania. However, their, their teachers are in different regions in the state, but they are able to work with them. My, then my next goal would be to move towards more of the United States to connect within our states and then finally be to be global and make the connection there. My idea is that I want to work with the younger um, students, the, the K through two students. Um, I know some of the some of the areas might be a little bit difficult, but I want to bring it to their level to just open up their eyes that there's more to what they see in their backyard and their communities than maybe the parks or, um, you know, in some areas. So Julie, she may see the, uh, the Great Wall or, or some historical places. But in Philadelphia, um, I could go and, and see the Liberty Bell. So that they need to understand that there's more out there than, than just what, where they are. Because some students may not even leave their town or their state. Um, no fault to anybody, but they may not travel or have the opportunity to travel to see all the, that is happening for them. So I want to give an opportunity for the students to, to share. Now, a lot of the wonderful um, Web 2.0 tools that are available um, may be difficult for a younger guy. So for us, we have our learning coaches, which are parents or grandparents or um, friends that are that could help within the, the learning of what's happening within the students. So my idea would simply be to get them cameras and let them go out and take some pictures. Each month, they'll take some pictures uh, and post one onto my framework. It's going to be very simple. It's going to be um, a, within a wiki or a blog where we're going to be able to keep the discussions that are happening. Um, Glogs are something, um, there's a software called Glogster. I don't know if you're aware of Glogster. Um, Glogster has some great tools within it where students can do audio recordings and also just video recordings. And they can, if they have a computer, now the students in my school, they receive laptops. So they will have a computer and could take pictures um, if they have internet, if, in, if they're using this Glogster. They can go out in their backyard and take pictures or video themselves through Glogster and then can just post it right onto there. That's what Glogster is. It's a, a poster type of community where they can share stuff and then write one or two sentences about what, what they're taking a picture of and why they're taking that picture. Well, my, I was going to um, put, <laughs> oh, got to go. Back to one second. So my idea would be for them to go out into the community and then they would post these pictures within the, uh, a wiki or a blog. Um, 
wh whichever may work. I think Globster might work because you can create a classroom within the Globs, and then students can go in and look at the different. Um, they can look, listen to the different audio, listen to the different pictures, um, and then see what their classmates have available. There's also areas where we could, you know, just p make it very simple, where it's just pictures or sentences, and then they can share that. I would create the template for them, but then I would bring students in to show them how to. Um, we would go through and show them how to use Glogster. I would show them how to use the tools synchronously, where we would go on to, we too use Blackboard Collaborate at our school. So I would be able to go in there and show them how to use Glogster, show them how to upload the pictures, show them or talk to them, give some discussion about what we're looking for. Um, now remember, keeping this in mind, um, I in the beginning, it's going to be just let's just well, like I asked you. Let's go out and see what what did you all see? What do you see right now? And you were able to put them on there. After um, at the end of the month, I was going to post some higher level thinking within the within the wiki um, or the blog to say what types of things you see these pictures. What are the similarities that you see? What are the contrasts? And why do you think? Uh, why do you think that? Or why do you think it's important to um, to use these skills or become connected to your community? Um, what's the type of uh, things that you would need to see? So let me see if I can show you really quickly. Okay, you guys should probably all see my desktop right now. Now I don't see you guys. Can you guys see? Oh, you don't see it. Okay, let me try something else. No, you don't see it. Okay. Hold on one sec. I just wanted to pull up but just a quick log of what I... Just as a small example. You see it now? Okay, okay. This is just a small, very basic blog that I would post at the end at the end of the month. I'm clicking on it and it's taking me off, so I just want to make sure you guys can still see. So if I did a small recording, if I hit record if I hit this button, you won't be able to hear it, but it's me reading these sentences to the, the students, telling them to answer these questions. So when a student um, this is just a, a small basic blog, but if I was to go back and look at my account as a as a blogster, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this one. Are you still with me? Can you guys still see that? Um, so down here, I would have the class. Now, currently, right now, I don't have um, students, but I work with because uh, I'm responsible for helping train staff. So I may not have students, but there's some classes. I have, um, I just want to show you if you have a glimpse if you haven't used Logster before. I could click on my colleagues, and then it'll give me a whole list of these are colleagues of mine, and there's about a hundred and, and some odd co colleagues. And so what would happen is that I would create this blog that I have, Right, so I'm creating the blog, and then students would be listed down here. And students could click on there, and they can look at all the different student blogs that they have. They can send a little message to them um, and let them know what their thoughts are about um, what's happening in that community. The idea is that we want to begin to build that relationship or awareness of what's happening around them. So moving forward, it's looking at the it's looking at the progression for what students need to see. So for for some assessments, I would have a, a rubric, like a picture rubric of what we're looking for to help with their writing, which would also help with the assessments that would go throughout the month. And then so they would be able to utilize the audio, video, and the drawing tools that are there um, because it's very it would be very simple. We would partner. Um, for, for the first, you know, trying it would be with partners, teachers, and students. And then the following year, uh, I want to try and keep those same students. 
um, and then move out more towards um, working within the states and then even globally. And then also tr begin another um, group of students at that very beginning level where they're learning of what's going on as far as what's happening within the community. So within the communication, um, I'm going to post weekly messages and maintain that uh, achievements and stuff on the wiki. I know there's great tools, you know, Twitter or a Google feed or things of that nature. Um, but I, again, since I'm working with the, the younger population and right now we're still at that um, virtual, you know, connecting that way, I want them to understand, um, you know, that the little parts of, of what's happening. Okay. Um, and then also, I'm going to create a page for, for notes and projects that I could maintain. And this page would be for me and then another teacher that I, I plan on partnering with. Now, um, I think I have that at the end. But the communication would stay open within the parents and the teachers. So they're, they're going to be able to have their, you know, they'll have their pieces where they can reflect within their wikis that will maintain um, also if they're having any concerns. But then that connection that's there with the instant email through through the Glocks or even me um, that would be there. So they'll, they'll be able to see all the different things that, that are there and available. So again, I think this was just a, in a nutshell, that communication. I think that was the bit, I think communication is such a huge piece of these um, when we're working uh, virtually or in this flat classroom because you need to make sure that they understand what's happening. But then also it, it making sure that the level of thinking of what they need is there. So I will hold some synchronous sessions so we'll be able to meet with them at least once a month. And then I, I was going to collect some photos and look at them during that synchronous time and make some more, have some more discussion about the compare and contrast for the, the geographic location that they're in, but then also as the months progress within the different areas, we can talk about the different seasons and what's happening. Uh, you know, an example in Pennsylvania, I think last year was the first year since I work, you know, I work with teachers that live in Erie, Pennsylvania, which is, you know, on the other side, I live in, in, near Philadelphia. We all had this almost the same exact amount of snow, which was the first time in a long time I've worked here for many years where we would have rain in Philadelphia and Erie would have, you know, a two feet of snow. So it, it is certainly something where it would be, a, that would become a big piece of what's happening for the science that's there. Um, and then be able to use some of the, those other, those fun tools if we want to, if, if we have an opportunity to show them how to use Vogi, I put that in there. I don't know how that would work. Again, working with the little ones. I don't want to throw too much in there, but I also wanted them to be, to be able to find that awareness that's there. But then also, I, I like this piece in the template that was there um, for what we had to complete about the for the citizenship, so they understand about collaborating and what's ethical and what they can put on there and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. All right, let me see what number. Sorry. And I think, I think that's it. Wait. Yep, that was all. So I'm going to go back to 39. I lost, I lost count here. <laughs> 29. <laughs> all right. Here we are. Oh, and so th then the creation would be the, the showcase of the photos and the, vi and the videos that would be there towards the end of the year. So the students would have all of their photos or videos or whatever kept in one place, whether it's their Glockster account. Um, and we're, we, it's still going to maintain a, a class wiki, so all their information would be there. So they're going to be able to, to put all that information together and showcase what they have learned and what has changed over the course of the year and what they have shared with, um, with students in their classes. And then the celebration would be meeting in, in Illumini or Blackboard Collaborate to present and we would invite our parents, all the students that are involved, our executive leadership team, and then outside communities to come, such as our vendors, to see what we have done within that first year. Now, as moving forward, 
being able to share this information within the states or globally would certainly be an easy task. We just need to find a, a good um, partner that could help maintain and, and being able to utilize some of those sharing places such as Google Docs if we wanted to go there or the wiki and be able to collaborate amongst each other and comment and show students how to comment and what's appropriate in commenting. So they're not just learning how to take pictures and posting it, writing a sentence about that picture. It's more than that. It's seeing things and, and becoming aware of all different surroundings that there's so much more available to them and being able to to share that information and, and, and work together. I think that's it. Any questions? Um, I just wanted to say that it's just excellent work. Uh, again, um, this is very simple, but you know when you have younger children, you do have to be simple. Um, if you can go, if you can start simple, like Flat Classroom, we started off very simply and then just kept adding little pieces to it, this sort of thing will grow. And uh, you know, this is something also that any classroom can do. So very nice work. And if you have any links to give me, um, I would love to have them. Thanks. I'll hand it back to Julie. That's great. And I love your images. And uh, you know, simplified but accessible. You know, that's that's the point as well. It's, it gives people a real sort of yes, I could do that sort of feeling. And that's great. Well done. Excellent. Okay, we're going to keep moving here, and uh, if I go to the next slide, questions? <laughs> Any questions for Kathy at this stage before we move to the next person? All right, we'll keep going. And I think this would be Kevin's. Kevin, over to you, thanks. Hello. Um here to tell you about uh, a project that we are actually right in the middle of right now. Uh, students have spent the last couple of weeks getting everything ready and now they are starting the research part and then in a couple of weeks they will do a presentation. And so this is between two sociology classes, two high school sociology classes. One is in Korea, one is in the U.S. in Illinois. And even though this is for high school sociology, uh, there, I think this can be modified to to other courses, especially geography or, or any just general social studies where people are trying to find out if what's true in one place is true in another, and then also to find out maybe something uh, greater just about uh, humans and humanity. And so um, this is, uh, this, th these are the locations of the two schools. Uh, our school is in a suburb of Seoul. And uh, the metropolitan area of Seoul has 24 million people, definitely a mega city. And the people we worked with, uh, the people we work with, uh, their metropolitan area is 125,000. And so I think it's a great contrast for both students, uh, both sets of students, to see uh, to see people in other parts of the world, and especially in different settings like large urban versus almost almost rural, at least smaller town, and to see if what's true in one place is true in the other. Uh, the project, uh, basically, we try to have it where it's groups of two, where it's one person at each school. Uh, but if, if need be, you know, we can go uh, two, two from one school and one from the other. But uh, we, we like to just pair up the students if possible. Uh, each, each set of students uh, comes up with two original research questions. And uh, the first one, the big picture question, is something just in general that they would like to know. And then specific question is how they are going to measure it. So for instance, a big picture question was um, how, how patient uh, are, are people in different cultures? And the specific question that the students thought would be the best way to find out the big picture question was uh, like measuring, it was asking something about measuring uh, how, how impatient they are in an elevator. And so, the specific question is how they would find out the answer to the big picture. And so once they've settled on their questions, then they will try to do research on, uh, on information that already exists relating to their topics. So for instance, if it was patients, they would research uh, as much as they could on patients and, and what studies have been done and, and things like that. And then they will conduct their own original research. A lot of people will do experiments, some will do surveys, uh, some will just do observation, but they'll have to do some kind of original research 
and they have several weeks to do that, so that will give them flexibility to pick and choose when they want to do that. And then after they do that, they will share their information with each other and then create a research report and a visual presentation where they will present in both schools and then hopefully they'll learn a little bit more about the subject, about uh, Korea and the U.S. and each other um, along the way. So uh, how do they communicate? Well, the students will talk at least one time via Skype at a designated time and because because of the time differences and because of the technology, what's happened is uh, the Illinois uh, class has gotten to school at 7 in the morning and then our kids have been up at 10 p.m. on that same day uh, to talk to them. And so um, we as the teachers are, are there to troubleshoot if, if anything goes wrong, but uh, that's a good time for them to get to know each other. But they don't talk until they have shared some things on the Google Doc. Uh, that they've created. And so that Google Doc will have uh, uh, that Google Doc will have uh, it will be shared between the, the students but also the teachers so we can we can see what's going on but to make sure that everything's going uh, smoothly. And so they will share like a brief introduction of themselves, some project ideas, and that they'll have at least an understanding of maybe where they want to go before they actually talk and who they are. And uh, we like to have a table of contents on that so they can understand, or, or so it's so it's organized and easy to to use. Uh, then after that, after they've kind of decided what their what their questions will be, they start editing the wiki with all of these different um, uh, different things. So the project plan, they'll have their tentative hypothesis, they have their research that they conducted, and then they will get peer feedback on the wiki as far as what can make their research better and that's before they go to research and hopefully they'll get some ideas and maybe tweak some of their project plans. Uh, teacher communication, we, we go back and forth a lot uh, via email. We did a lot of the project planning via a Google Doc before we made it live and then we'll we use NetVibes uh, which is something I got from the Spot Classroom um, experience uh, to monitor the wiki edits. And then teacher to student, we can comment using Google Docs, like we can leave comments saying, hey, maybe this is a great idea, but maybe what, have you considered this? Uh, and then also just personal discussions, meeting with each student quite, quite, um, quite frequently. Whoops, okay, so that was 38, so I need to go to 39, and I am, I did not see 39, but I'm going to go to 40. And so from here on out, it's going to, I'm going to show you just some examples from our wiki. And so these are the examples of questions. I know it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but these are the questions that students are asking for this round. And so for instance, Dennis and Deanna, they want to find out how do different cultures use gestures involving physical contact. And so they decided to measure that by looking at high fives and hugs at the high school level. And so uh, that's, that's how they would measure it. Uh, and I, I just I just uploaded the link to this project page so you can see not just the ones that are showing on the screen, but also everything related to the project. So feel free to share that or to look at it, and uh, and I'll mention later if you have any questions or feedback or ways to improve it. I'd I'd love to hear it. Uh, so this is the table of contents on one Google Doc. If you if you notice, this is uh, a group of three. And this document is shared between those three and the teachers. And so we require a table of contents. And, and on that wiki, we explain how that table of contents is set up. But it has their, our students' introductions, their students' introductions, their ideas, how they're going to communicate, like what will be their Skype, uh, Skype IDs and things like that. Um, and then possible research questions, their final question and then any other things that can help them in, in planning. And so that's one example of a Google Docs. And here is an example of comments. So this group had four possible questions. Uh, the teacher from uh, the U.S., J.M. Smith, uh, she made comments on that. And then some of the students uh, at her school also gave additional comments on possible uh, questions that, that they could ask. 
uh, schedule. Uh, because this project is a large one and it takes, uh, it will take students outside of the classroom to do research and also just to plan it, it, it takes a while. Uh, we have this schedule posted and so uh, as you can see it lasts uh, about a month and a half but uh, from Wednesday the 29th of February, I'm sorry, from Tuesday the 6th of March to Tuesday the 27th of March, we're not really working on this in class because that's the time that they are doing the research out of class. But until then there's a lot of time in class spent communicating with each other, doing research, uh, posting the project plans, peer peer editing, and things like that. And so um, this can help them plan ahead and and hopefully uh, hopefully achieve you know at a higher level than if if they didn't have this. Uh, so this is one example of wiki content. And so at the top is their big picture question, and then just below it is their specific question. And then they have to put their hypothesis and why they have it. Um, they don't have. To, I don't think they had to put their objective, but maybe they did. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't remember at the moment, but uh, at least I appreciated their objective. And then the method. They definitely had to have the method, and that's what the the students in the class about a day or two ago uh, peer edited was the research method, like to say, hey, will this help you under? Will this help you find what you're looking for? And so. They also at the bottom have to come up with potential errors. They didn't have enough room to, to put it because they have to say why might their research not be completely, uh, not completely um, accurate. And so hopefully because they can be aware of it on the front end that maybe they can tweak it to make their research more accurate. Alright, uh, from Flat Classroom we learned about NetVibes. I'd never heard of this before but we set up uh, this here between the two teachers and that way we can make sure uh, that the students are, are editing the wiki when they're supposed to and we can actually see what edits are made using the RSS feed from each wiki page. And so this is an example of a presentation from the past but basically these two students uh, try to figure out if headphones were a symbol of social isolation or not and so uh, they they did research. I can't show you just time-wise what all they did for research but at the end, they discovered uh, that when they went into a store, the student from Seoul, nobody asked them to take their headphones off, while uh, the student who did the exact same thing at the same time of day in Illinois, most of them were asked to take their headphones off. And so they tried to come up with why that happened, why was that different. Uh, even though in this particular case you saw differences, sometimes students expect differences and find similarities, and sometimes they expect similarities and find differences. and, and it surprises me too, and so that's part of the fun for me is to get to see uh, see what what is out there. Because without me being able to do the research, I wouldn't know. And then the students, when they share it, they learn a lot of things uh, about themselves and then the other culture as well. And then this is just an example of uh, potential errors. And so they have to say, here's why maybe our research uh, wasn't the best. And so each group will have to to do that. So finally, whoops. Oh, <laughs> let me go back, 49, 50, all right, and so if you have any feedback, uh, please ask right now, but if, if you want to later on, uh, the link to the, the project page is there, or it's the same one that I posted, uh, or you can email me, or you can uh, contact me on Twitter, and actually, uh, we, I, did the, I did this project the last couple of semesters, but in the fall, the person who I've worked with, I couldn't do it with uh, her class. She wasn't teaching sociology in the first semester. And so a friend of mine who uh, ha has done the flat classroom training, she got on uh, Twitter and she sent out a message to flat class to find a partner for me. And we actually found a, a school in Texas to do the same project with in the fall. And so that was that was great uh, that, that she could use t uh, Twitter, flat class connections, and, and we really, it was great for our students to be able to have that experience. And so if you have any feedback or questions or want clarification on anything, I'd be happy to, to, to hear them. And that, that's all I've got. Any questions? I just wanted to ask if you feel like you're getting better at, at, at helping the students develop better questions. Um, 
uh, do they feel like it's too open-ended? Or I'm hugely impressed with these questions, but you know, it really takes some thinking and talking to get there. Yeah, the we we've spent a lot of time on the developing their questions, and and it we we try not to rush into the project until they've developed their questions. We uh, the the teachers we feel like have gotten better at it. We still feel like we can improve, but as far as guiding them, uh, is we try to create help them create original questions. Uh, we we tell them to look at things that have happened in the past, or as, as far as uh, what other students. Have have done in the past, and to uh, to try to maybe go in a different direction uh, with that, uh, we uh, are big on saying: Does this specific question is that the best way to help you answer your big picture question? Because a lot of times they'll have good questions, uh, good big picture, and good specific, but they don't necessarily relate. And so we really say: Is this specific question? Helping you answer your big picture question, and then also uh, we also have to guide them and say when they come up with their question, say, okay, this is a great idea, uh, but how uh, how will you be able to carry this out? Like, how will you find this research? And so sometimes they haven't thought through that part, and they they've got to be able to somehow collect data, and if they can't do that, uh, then maybe the project won't be. Uh, successful, and so we have to help them out on the front end. So the question part is huge, and we we spend a lot of time with it, and and hopefully uh, it hopefully it's paying off. Hi, Kevin. It's Cynthia. Great job. Um, I, I I'm sure I've asked before, but what are the age uh, ages of the students that you're doing this with? These students here are uh, 11th grade, uh, primarily. I've got some 10th grade, I've got some 12th grade, and I think, uh, I think the teacher in the States is 12th. And I think if you did it on a smaller scale, it could, it could work for, for younger, younger students, but uh, it's, it's upper high school is what we've been doing. Kevin, fantastic work. Thank you very much. I love the cultural aspect of it and just I really want to sit and think about it and analyze it and I feel like I want to interact with your students on this one. It's just really fascinating from a global perspective. Uh, Cynthia is next and yeah, Cynthia, you've got your slides there. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go because I've got to get to school. If I don't go now, I'll never get there. So I'm going to pass over to Vicky and Lisa to finish up the session and just say thank you very much to everybody. And congratulations. And Cynthia, I look forward to uh, catching up with yours via the recording. Okay? So thanks again. Whoops, and we've got some slides happening there. And can we fix that? <laughs> what happened to our slides here? Uh, okay, I'm going to pass it over to Cynthia and good luck. Okay, bye for now. Okay, so Lisa will help us figure this out. I'm looking at the original presentation that was handed out, and I know that they're there. Uh, worst case, if uh, Cindy, uh, Cynthia, if you want to bring it up on your screen, if Lisa can't get these in here, I thought they were in here. Um, oh, you got it? Are we set then? Okay, if we've got it, then great, and if not, then um, we can do a screen share if we need to. Go ahead. Uh, excellent work, everybody. Okay, hi everybody. Um, this is great because I think that um, Kevin's project sort of uh, ties in with my project. Um, mine focuses uh, more, I guess, with, with so in the social studies um, angle. Um, I thought I'd start by just showing the uh, project trailer. I don't know if this is this live link live if I click on here or is this a PDF? I don't know. Maybe I should just try it. Otherwise I can put it in the, it's a JPEG, huh? So, all right, well anyway, all right, I won't then. But here, there's the um, the link I put in, in the uh, chat box. And, um, and I'll also, um, 
So you see that there. And I'll also add in the link to the project. Hold on one second, copy. Okay, and that's and that's the link to um, the class project, um, the more complete class class project. Excuse me, so that you can uh, see more of what, what this is about. But in any event, it's uh, the project is called Perspective Detectives, um, and and uh, the, the the basic idea is to help students become detectives to explore the possibility that their perspective on a historical event or crisis, figure, war, even just general time period, based on what they they learn in school, um, may or may not be the same as other students' perspectives, depending on where they live and where they're from and what they are taught in school. Um, so there are, there are many questions to consider um, about this. Let me just see what my next. Um, I thought that it would work best if um, at least, you know obviously two schools, but it could be more, but uh, two schools from from different locations, um, different countries. But regions might work too within the same country, depending. But I'm, I'm imagining imagining it being um, different countries, but revolving around the same topic, time period, person, event, um, and basically they would be the goal to compare, contrast, share their understandings. Okay, let's go to the next. Um, so. These two schools, uh, the students in the two schools would, would meet in the handshake phase. And they would begin to uh, you know, get to know each other, talk, to talk about um, digital citizenship and, um, and how to work the technology that they'll be using. And I imagine that they would be using a, a wiki to do the first phase, which is to reflect on what they know about a particular topic. And some of the questions to consider that I, I thought of are, um, well, what have students in our school learned about the particular event, crisis, figure, et cetera? Um, uh, why, why, and then start to think about, well, what have other students in other countries around the world learned about the same event? And they may, may or may not have covered the event at all. Um, so in any event, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But first, so they would reflect on what they have done as a school, and the other school would reflect on what they have done in this wiki, and then go to a compare and contrast. Um, you know, are there similarities? Are they even talked about in each other's countries? Why and why not? And that's, I think, the, the important thing, is to think about why or why not. What does that say about, about the their country and what's, what's important and, um, and about the needs, the cultural identity, to take it sort of to a bigger why question. And that's where the synthesis comes in. Um, you know, what, what does this all mean? What does that mean for us as, as global citizens, sort of getting beyond our own, um, our own textbooks in many cases, getting outside? Um, and lastly, just to, to celebrate the learning. And I'll go into exactly a, a little bit more of what, of how we're going to document these things in a minute. Um, here, oh, here we are. So what will we make? So I'm envisioning that the wikis would be the place for students to collaborate and put their own um, understandings of a particular, let's just say time period. But again, it could be a historical figure or a, um, an event or whatever. Um, so write what they know, and the wiki could also be a place where they'll then read what the other school knows and thinks, and um, a place to sort of synthesize and and um, I would I would I would hope that I think that this project can be scaled up or back depending on the needs of the particular schools. Um, in terms of, I mean, if, if the school really wanted to go for it, I would envision them students pairing up or making small groups to create videos um, about the different, the way the different perspectives are being presented. But um, I know that different teachers have different needs and different time frames. And it could be um, as simple as sort of collaborating on a wiki and 
and uh, coming to some synthesis and some, you know, awakening. <laughs> um, it would be great if there was both that that written synthesis and then the video. In any event, then ultimately, I would love for all these projects because they they do cover historical time periods and people in historical time periods to be part of a um, a collaborative sort of website, like a Wikipedia of this type of project, where it, each time a teacher works on this project, he, she, the teachers can add to it. So it's sort of creating this um, world non-textbook. <laughs> and um, and uh, be something that, that can, be, can be live and can even be changed and added to. Let's see what else. So um, in addition, obviously, they're meeting new friends around the world. I know my, I, have a, I work in a, a small um, school in the countryside. So to, to get beyond their school is huge. Um, did work on their digital citizenship, um, how you, you talk and share and respect each other and respect each other's um, cultures. And, Broadening perspectives. Oh wow! I didn't know. Why wouldn't you study the American Revolution? And, and what did you study instead? I mean, these are things that maybe some of our kids didn't even uh, consider um, to ultimately create the global awareness that is so important. Um, so there's just some some contact, but I, I gave I put more in the um, the chat. Um, let's see if I had anything else to talk about. Uh, I haven't done this yet. I've spoken with teachers at my school um, uh, who have expressed interest. And, um, and I think that my, my challenge now is to find partners and uh, see if there's a, a match in you know, the historical time periods that people want to work on, uh, how much time people are willing to commit or want to, um, and uh, and that's where I am, and uh, I'm really excited. So if anybody wants to, uh, to jump in on this, it'd be awesome. Thanks, guys. Do you have a website yet? I know you have your email, but do you have a website? Or do you want to create a Google Doc, or how are you going to? sort of create a platform for the teachers to share with each other. This is a great idea. And you know I blogged about this um, earlier on my blog. And uh, all of you are going to be there. It's just very nice work. I love the title. And you know a lot of a, uh, of a project is the title. It's great work. Um, yeah, and you could even produce some things um, out of this. Cynthia, do you want to share your idea? Anybody else want to say something? Yeah, I, I haven't. I haven't since I haven't actually started this with a um, with a school. I don't exactly know what platform it's going to take, but I'm open to suggestions. I was just thinking a wiki, but well, you can always add Google Docs. So why don't you just start a wiki and and get it going, or start a Google Doc? Um, it would be great. Um, Google site, whatever you want to do, it would be great to have a link because I've been posting these links in for. Um, for, for everybody, just a really nice job. So excellent work. Um, I know that we have several others that are going to be presenting. Um, Sandy and Jessica both have theirs to present. Uh, and they're, they're not in here today. I believe everybody has, uh, has presented. And I just want to give my applause in the recording. We will post this uh, recording. Lisa, I was actually hoping you could convert this one to video for us so that we could have uh, the video to share on my blog. I've got the post drafted. But I think that our, um, our pedagogy is improving and we're starting to communicate in ways that we can understand in terms of what we're using. So um, excellent ideas. Everybody wonderful work. Uh, absolutely thrilled and um, just very proud of all that you have done. If nobody else wants to raise their hand, if we don't have anything else, then uh, we are going to conclude this session. 
and we will be checking your journals, and you'll be receiving your certificate from, from Lisa as soon as uh, Julie and I sign off, hopefully in the next week or two. And we have an official blog post that goes out with our graduating teachers. So Lisa will be in touch to get your bio and your information, and we release that uh, out. And a post-project survey, I do believe that there is. This is kind of our celebration. So uh, Lisa will uh, usually handles our ending up. And uh, just thank you. Thank you all very much. And uh, we appreciate your time and all that you've done. You've just done a great job. And uh, you know, I'm close to a lot of the teachers, but the certified teachers, you guys are just something um, extra special. And Katie, thank you for joining us and sharing your thoughts and being just a great participant. It really meant a lot to have you jump in from Twitter to share with us. So. Thank you all. Great work. We're going to stop the recording. Uh, you did a great job. Thank you.